The last presentation before lunch, a lot of people said they didn't want to follow this presentation, so this is why we put them before lunch, because uh, everybody said they were going to be too fun, so I didn't want to go after them. Uh, so the Cleveland Cavaliers have also been coming for a, a few years now, and they've got a really interesting story because their focus is very much on the workplace, similar, similar to what we've seen at TriHealth. It's really about um, improving the employee experience because it really improves... <laughs> the results and outcomes in the rest of the business. Um, you can see, of course, from the pictures that they shared that they've got a good personality that they're going to come on, on stage with. So we've got Aria here, who's Cindy Lou Who, Jack as a Jack in the Box. And we've got Andy. Oh, sorry, Andy. What is the. Who, who, who is he again? Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward. He's been told he's a doppelganger of. So. Uh, why don't you come up in here and tell us some of the digital transformation projects you're working on and how you get your uh, team members involved. All right, so we are the group that's keeping everyone from lunch, so we understand that. Um, just a quick presentation, three hours, that's it, no problem. No pictures, nothing, just a paragraph on each slide for everyone to read. It's gonna be fine, so. Um, so, as Jessica said, this is um, myself and Andy, this is our third time coming to uh, um, Open Nation. And this is Aria's first time coming to Open Nation. So before, before we get into the presentation, I just want to talk about that because I posted on the LinkedIn group of the benefits of coming to Open Nation and what we've experienced especially because it is, we're all in the same boat. We're all running the same program. We all experience the same challenges and it's kind of a, a breath of fresh air when you first come here because you, you see that you're in the same boat. You, you see everyone's doing the same challenges and, and we have the same successes and, and we can really learn from each other. And that's what we take away each year is I know a lot of us are taking pictures, taking notes, and I, I think the goal is you should take away trying to change two or three things per year from or like improving or adapting or putting that into your program because I know there's like a thousand things you want to do but real, realistically like if you make two or three changes you're going to see immense improvement in your operations and especially for us this past year um, there were a couple things that we worked with Carrie. Um, Carrie's a big, Carrie. A uh, very big, great partner for us and kind of the suggestions that we had and, and, and a couple of the things that we borrowed, borrowed from other, one, other presentations that we've heard and, and it's just, it, it's put us in a great place that we're finally presenting. Um, we, we didn't feel the first two years we were ready, but now we're ready. So I will dive into our presentation now. So building a better mousetrap. Um, I don't necessarily think I have to explain what a mousetrap team is. I'm sure everyone has them at their organizations. <laughs> This, this is on, right? Um, so I'll get um, kind of in the details of what the mousetrap, what our team is known as, is mousetrap, uh, what we're doing, how we got there, um, talk about the organizational breakdown. Um, then Andy's going to talk about um, what we utilize the idea scale platform for, um, what we call it, some of the successes we've had, um, talk about our annual campaign, Cheese Madness. Um, then Aria is going to get into the summer of cheese. As you can see, there's a theme here. Um, so join us in that journey um, and Mousetrap Roadshows and then kind of what's next. So Mousetrap, where, where does that name come from? What does it mean? Um, to us it's, uh, to a lot of organizations, continuous improvement, process improvement, innovation. Um, but our owner, Dan Gilbert, he's not big on conventional names. So the HR team is known as the Pulse. Our business intelligence team is, named, is known as The Brain. So we had to have a uh, kind of an interesting name. So it, as you can read at the top, it, it comes from the saying, if you build a better mousetrap, they'll be beating down a path to your door. And, and that's really what our team is um, striving for. We're kind of the eyes and ears of the organization. We're, we're as NASA said, Sherpas. We're, we're walking people through the process because they're really in the trenches every single day, looking at the process the same way, doing it, continuously and we're outside of that that we can ask that question of why do you do it that way it's a simple question why 
and it just gets them to change that thought process very quickly. It's, it, they may not have an explanation, or as a lot of us, the, the usual uh, answer is, well, that's how I've always done it. That doesn't mean it's right. It, it may have been right 15 years ago when you did it, but we also had square wheels. Those aren't right anymore. That's not going to get us anywhere. We need to, our team is there to change that philosophy and that thought process and kind of assist people and not in an accusatory way either of like, why are you doing it that way? It's like, just why are you doing it that way? Um, we originally were known as business consultants. And if you've seen the movie uh, Office Space, uh, <laughs> Well, that, was the first, that was kind of the icebreaker with these teams, is like, we're not in here, we're not gonna be sitting here as the Bobs going, so what would you say you do around here? <laughs> uh, and then half of you are gonna be gone at the end of the week. Um, no, no, we really wanted to build those relationships. So we just kind of talked about their business and, and, under, and have them understand that they're the true subject matter experts. We're gonna be helping them through that journey. We're, we're just kind of, as NASA said, Sherpas, we're walking them along the path and, and making sure that they understand what they're doing and kind of getting them out of that mentality of this is how we've always done it. So our focus uh, uh, is primarily on process improvement and simplifying the team member jobs. So really taking a look at how can we make things more efficient? How can we improve your day-to-day -day lives so that you're operating at the most efficient way or optimal optimization possible? So um, we combine that with a kind of a background in Lean Six Sigma, which is a process improvement methodology. Um, each one of us is trained at, a, at a different levels. I'm a black belt, uh, Andy's a green belt, and then Ari is a yellow belt. So, um, like I said, we always ask why. That's just a simple question. It gets your foot in the door, and it's non-confrontational. And then, when we originally joined the Cavs, um, this was kind of something that was started at Quicken Loans at Dan Gilbert's The Mothership, if you will. That's where he primarily uh, kind of makes the money and uh, where everything started. Um, I was a part of the uh, startup team at the Cleveland, or actually Jack Casino, so I figured he named it after me. He was so impressed with my work. Um, but it was formerly the uh, Caesars Cleveland. Um, and we had the, I was part of the initial startup mousetrap team there. And when I initially applied, um, we had just had our, fir our first daughter and kind of taking a leap on this. When I came home and told my wife, I was yeah, I'm gonna apply for this mousetrap team. And she went, what? What, what? What are you doing? Why are you being an exterminator? <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 that's not what we're doing. It, it's it kind of explained process improvement. So she was on board, um, and it was the best decision I've ever made. And when I really saw what the benefit of this team was, is when I sat in on a training at Quicken Loans, and they were talking about this new platform they were building. And it was the ability to get loans online, facet, like pre-approved for line, uh, loans immediately. And in the meeting, I was like, there's no way this can, that, that just seems crazy to me. So fast forward, it, it was known as Rocket Mortgage. Now our field house is, or our new arena is now named Rocket Mortgage Field House. So as you can see, it was pretty successful in what they were doing there. But that was kind of the thought process. And, and that's when it, it like really clicked, on, clicked with me of, we're making a big change within the organization. We can do some great things here. So when we initially started with the um, Cleveland Cavaliers, we were under the business resource team. And the business resource team re reported the CFO. We were with HR, IT, um, legal, facility operations, and it was kind of a hodgepodge, if you will, of a group. Um, but our focus then was really getting that team to buy into what we were doing, being a new team. Because we felt if we didn't get the business resource team bought into what we're doing, how is the rest of the organization gonna, gonna feel about us? Like coming in going, now let me tell you what you're doing wrong and how I can improve it. That doesn't work. So we need to have our initial team bought in and we saw some, some decent success. We, we got those teams built in, but as you can, as everyone can say, like there was a little bit of a lack of senior leadership buy-in at that point. Within the past year, we've transitioned over to the business resource, uh, business intelligence group. And um, we have three different pillars there. One, one group leads the data management side, one leads the analytics side, and then there's us with the business improvement, our process improvement, mousetrap side. And it just was a breath of fresh air into us. It really gave us that shot in that arm because our uh, leader, Kevin, uh, really just believed in what we were doing. And he was supportive and he gave us a voice in rooms that we didn't necessarily have a voice in because he would go into senior leadership meetings and go, hey, 
our team's running an innovation challenge. What ideas do you guys have? Like he was that voice for us when we didn't have one. And it just, the growth in our team, it really put us into a position to be, be able to present here. It gave us uh, the ability to have the successes that we can share, the challenges, the opportunities, whatever we wanna talk about to share with this group because of moving to this team and just moving to, into a group with individuals that had the same thought process. Um, we, we can't be thankful enough for kind of that change and where the organization's going, and it, it's been great. So, but how do we use IdeaScale? So at Quicken Loans, they had a uh, website called The Cheese Factory. So, like I said, there's gonna be a lot of cheese stuff, so it, it's fine. Um, so, but for us, that wasn't something that we wanted our own brand, we wanted something different, so we decided to come up with our own way of doing it, so. Yeah, and that's, uh, so the, the name of it is The Integrator. Um, so as you can see, the, the, the cheese is very evident here. Um, so like, like Jack mentioned, Quicken Loans actually got their start with Cheese Factory, um, and then we built our own. So to break down the name, INNO stands for innovation, which I'm sure most of us here are familiar with. Um, we just want to set the standard for the MBA, um, not just our organization, but kind of pave the way for every team in the MBA. Um, and then the second portion of that is the, the grader itself, which is a metaphorical grader. Um, so we don't call them ideas on our platform, we call them pieces of cheese. So when ideas are submitted or cheese is submitted, um, we, we utilize the, the grader as a way to break down those ideas into smaller pieces, making them more uh, manageable, and then that way we can provide results in a, in a larger for, uh, format. So finally, the R is bracketed um, because of that's, that's kind of our, our catchphrase. Um, it stands for raise research results um, in short, and that stands for raising awareness, researching processes and solutions, and then ultimately providing results because that's at, at the end of the day, that's what we hope to accomplish. Um, so since our inception in November of 2016, um, we're just about at 700 ideas submitted, um, just shy of 300 team members involved, um, and we have a workforce of 450 team members, so that's a pretty good chunk of them. Um, we're still not satisfied yet, obviously, but um, we're getting there. Um, and our implementation rate is right about 20%, I wanna say. Um, so to go over some of those implementations um, within, within that, that stemmed from the integrator, um, the, the first being uh, Microsoft Office 365. So you can kind of see a trend. A lot of these are tech, um, tech background kind of things. So as Ryan mentioned earlier, there are silos that exist. Um, just because we are a professional basketball organization doesn't mean that we're any different than and any other business, essentially. So um, we noticed when we first started that teams were communicating um, across several different platforms, you know, whether it be um, email, phone, um, Skype, I think some people were using AOL Instant Messenger, which was odd. Um, but um, we, we were just looking for a way to kind of build that collaboration and make it easier for team members to um, participate and collaborate with each other. So um, not only was it communication, but it was document storage um, and overall security of, of some of these documents because um, there were a couple hundred thousand dollar deals on the table and we wanted to make sure that those stay within our, within our house. So we worked with the, the IT team um, to roll that out, educate team members, and then ultimately adopt it, which is still a work in progress. Um, we're getting there, but it's, uh, it's kind of a lead by example kind of thing, so um, we encourage team members to do so um, on the daily. Next up is the team member ticket process. So when we first started, Jack and I at least, um, was I, I started in June of 2016, so it was in the midst of a four-year NBA Finals run, um, with one of those being an NBA championship. So we like to take credit for that. Um, that was one of our, one of our first implementations, uh, I like to say. <laughs> N nobody else in the organization finds that very funny for some reason. Um, but uh, yeah, so each team member was allotted two tickets per game. Those were, we didn't have to pay full price, they were taxed, um, but we had no idea how much that tax was or when the tax was gonna be taken out of your paycheck. So during the finals, um, that, that price tag went up quite a bit. So team members were expecting a nice chunk of change in their paycheck and ultimately they ended up owing money. So um, it was kind of a stressful um, situation, so we just wanted to provide clarity as to how much they were being taxed and when that tax was gonna be taken out of their paycheck. So um, we worked with our finance team to get that situated up and running. And then once LeBron left, um, that kind of <laughs> went 
out the window. Um, so now tickets are free, and we get up to up to four per game. <laughs> so <laughs> all all that work went right out the window. <laughs> um, yeah. So <laughs> so if anybody needs tickets, let us know. All right. Um, so next on the list is the expense report PO system. Um, Jack, and this is one of Jack's favorite stories, but we used to sit by the printer um, at our old offices and we would see people coming up with all sorts of receipts, like taping them together, gluing them on a single piece of paper, and we're like, what kind of twisted arts and crafts project is this? <laughs> um, so, yeah, we, we, upon further research, determined that that was the way that it was, um, that it functions, so, which was obviously not ideal. So um, we worked on getting this implemented, um, again, with our finance team, and then we've been using the app since we've been here this week um, for, to expense our dinners and anything else that's, that's on the list. So um, that was a big win for us. The Ultimate HRS system is another platform that we rolled out. Um, Jack's, Jack was basically the project manager on that one, so um, we essentially had a payroll system, an HR system that didn't talk to each other whatsoever. Um, so team members would have to go to, to the payroll side of things for, for one area and then the HR for the other. Um, so upon implementing that, we ultimately simplified their, their lives there um, and kind of simplified the onboarding process as well because a lot of the documents are now digital as opposed to, to paper format. So. That's, that's another area, um, the ABI implementation. Um, so ABI is a, is a hot topic at, at the field house. It's a scheduling and timekeeping system for uh, part-timers. Um, so at the time, we were using an Excel sheet um, to basically provide estimates for our staffing costs, and we were overstaffing by quite a bit. Um, so by implementing this system, we simplified the scheduling uh, piece of things and then ultimately cut back on our, on our costs. So um, it wasn't the easiest transition. Uh, none of these are, um, because like we've talked about in the past, the, the adoption is, is such a difficult thing to, to kind of um, spearhead. So um, people are quite resistant to change, some more so than others, but you know, we, we battle through and make sure that they eventually get on board. And then finally, the Q move. So what used to be known as Quicken Loans Arena, was transformed the past two years, 18 months, something like that, into which is now Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, like Jack mentioned. Um, so we had the tall task of moving like 450 team members from the arena to a temporary office space. So that includes anything from their IT equipment to their, their chairs and desks, whatever it may be, um, sending those communications out and making sure that it was a smooth transition. And, and then obviously when we moved back, um, this, so this is just a rendering. We have other pictures of the, the field house itself that we can show you guys later, but um, it, was, it was definitely a tall task, but um, there were only a few complaints, nothing, nothing major. Um, I th yeah, nothing crazy, I don't think. <laughs> I mean, it, the, the biggest one was when we moved to the temporary offices, people wanted some sort of transportation to go from the parking garage to the temporary offices, and there's like underground tunnels, and everyone's favorite subject in D.C. is scooters. So that got brought up, a golf cart, and so we... Roller kind of blades. Like, yeah, yeah uh, so sourcing our purchasing team, uh, range transfer, trans, uh, transportation and everything. Sure. Um, so these, like I said, these are some rather large implementations um, that took quite a bit of time, but um, we got to a point where we were kind of looking for um, some new ideas, some fresh ideas, so we, we ran a campaign which we like to call Cheese Madness. Um, so it's, it's in unison with uh, college basketball's March Madness. Um, so it's basically a month-long challenge that we're, we're looking to generate um, not just quality ideas, but a quantity of ideas as well. So as you can see in the corners, or the regions, the fan development, team member commitment, enterprise collaboration, and civic leadership are, are big rocks. So those are organizational goals and objectives that we focus on throughout the year. Um, so we assigned senior leaders to each of those, um, and we, we generated ideas specific to those. So um, typically the integrator is an open forum, um, but this time around, obviously, we, we focused on those, those areas. And quick sidebar, this is our mascot right here. Uh, Alexander the Great. Um, so he's, he's uh, what, what's Quicken Loans Simon? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, he's, he's kind of our, our protector and hence the, the medieval garb there. Um, and, and great is spelled G-R-A-T-E. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. To tie into everything. Yeah, um, yeah so 
essentially how, how this campaign is ran, and this, this was our third iteration of it. So the first two years we saw moderate success, the first year was kind of so-so. It was, um, we were still a new team getting our footing underneath us, so um, not, not the results that we were hoping for, but this past time we changed the format up and up the prizes. Incentives are a huge factor in participation, which is, is good and bad. Um, this year we gave away a 65-inch TV, uh, Apple Watch, and uh, AirPods, so that kind of changed the game for us. Um, so as I said, the first two weeks of the, of the campaign are basically just idea generation. Um, and then after those two, two weeks are over, we present those ideas specific to each region or topic um, to the senior leaders. Um, and then that's, that's kind of how the bracket was built. Um, so they picked their four best ideas for each. Um, and then the participation por portion of that afterwards would be team members actually voting on the ideas that they want to see become implemented. Um, the, the hope was that all of them get implemented, but we wanted to focus on the ones that, that mattered most to team members. So um, I'm not sure if you guys can read this, but um, Flex Hours was the one that actually ended up winning. Um, in the NBA or just the, the sports world in general, the work-life balance is a huge issue. Um, people work in 80 plus hours a week, especially during the season. So um, that was one that we implemented right off the bat. Um, so we have a policy in place now that if team members need to go to a doctor's appointment or whatever the case may be, they, they have the flexibility to do so. Um, so all in all, we had over 250 ideas submitted during that two week, um, that two week period. Um, we had 98 unique individuals submit ideas, um, 74 um, new team members added, and like I said, there were a few that were implemented, um, but we also had a huge backlog of ideas to focus on moving forward. So I'm gonna let Arya discuss kind of how we attacked that this summer. Yeah, so this summer, uh, we call it Summer of Cheese. Um, <laughs> as Andy said, we got over 250 ideas for this campaign, so we did wanna make sure that it was gonna be a productive summer. Um, we also knew that the summer is our off season, so we wanted to make sure that all these other teams that are very, very busy during the actual season, um, this is a time to kind of like get with them and make sure we can implement as much as possible. So we sat down to talk about it. We realized we don't really have a method to our madness, essentially. Like, how are we going to prioritize all these ideas? Because, yes, we got 255 ideas. That's super awesome. But we still had a lot of ideas already in our backlog. So. We decided we need some type of prioritization method, um, and that's when we decided we needed a way to like rate these ideas. Like, how are they gonna? How are we gonna attack them? Like, which ones are we gonna attack first? So Carrie helped us actually, and we realized that there is a function on our integrator website um, that you can actually rate individual ideas. So we came up with five different things that we're gonna rate each idea based on. So all three of us go in. It's going to be based off of cost implement, cost savings, um, how big of an impact this idea has, um, how innovative it is, um, and then the fifth one is just like how, how long it's going to take us to implement this idea. So after all three of us go in, it computes a number essentially, um, and we set the bar to be, we thought six was a fair number. Um, so anything like six or higher is going to be ranked a high priority. So to kind of like enhance this idea, um, Andy's been actively working on integrating that data into Tableau. So that helps us like visualize um, how we've prioritized, but also it's going to bring in another aspect of it, and that's how old these, some of these ideas are. So not only are we focusing on the ones that we've rated high, but it's going to allow us to see like which ones have been aging in there and making sure we don't neglect those. So that's something that we've kind of built into our process because we realized we didn't have like a day-to-day -day management of our website. Um, you know, we're looking at 350 plus ideas and we're thinking like, where do we start? So I built up this process um, and this incorporates that review system um, as well as that Tableau piece to it that we're working on. Um, some of the other implementations that we've been working on actively from this campaign over the summer, I know obviously Andy mentioned flex hours and uh, the automatic calendar update, um, but we had a lot of ideas. We saw a trend with like wellness, 
um, as well as onboarding and talent acquisition. So what we did was we made a spreadsheet of all of the ideas that surrounded wellness and we presented them to our wellness coordinator and she's done a really good job at implementing a lot of them. We had a lot of ideas around mental health. Um, so there's now we have therapy once a week. Um, so we have counselors that come in. Any team member can make appointments. It doesn't have to be work-related that they talk about. It could be anything um, de-stressing. We also have monthly massages now because of this campaign. So people come in and can get a nice little massage. Um, another, uh, another popular one was kind of like a zen area. So like a quiet room or space that anybody can go to just to kind of de-stress for a few minutes away from their desk. Um, so those were three really popular ones amongst a lot of other wellness ideas. Um, and then the onboarding and talent acquisition piece to it, uh, we've actively been working with our HR team, Andy and I, and we've incorporated a lot of the ideas that came through into a formalized process with our HR team, um, which is now gonna be the process moving forward. So our mousetrap road shows, um, this is something that we attribute a lot of our success to. Um, what we basically take this presentation, we've enhanced it a little bit, but we meet, met with 24 different teams and kind of went over exactly what we're going over with you now, what we do, how we can help you, um, and introducing them to our integrator website, how they can utilize it. Um, and it also just helps us with that enterprise collaboration piece. So it's building those relationships and that face-to-face -face interaction um, really helps like make people feel more comfortable coming to us, even if they don't want to use the website, coming to us with ideas um, is more of like a verbal cheese submission. A lot of, we get a lot of like drive-by verbal submissions. Um, so not only are we meeting with the teams in our field house, but we do have the two off-site locations. We have the practice courts, um, which that's actually a picture of there where the team practice. And then we have our can't charge, which is our, um, what do you call it, like G League. G League. So that's like where they go before they would come to the NBA. So we went out to those two locations um, and we met with them, kind of gave the same road show. And it's nice because a lot of times they can feel excluded being that they're not at the field house with us. Um, so again, it's just building those relationships, letting them know that we're not here just to help those in our field house, we're here to help the entire organization. Um, and actually someone at the Canton Charge requested that they have their own personal section of the um, integrator where they can submit ideas, so that was pretty cool. So what's next? Um, as um, Aria kind of brought up with the Canton Charge, we're, we obviously primarily are known for the Cleveland Cavaliers, but we also have a couple other teams that we kind of assist with. So the Cleveland Monsters are our minor, uh, AHL hockey team. Um, Can Charge are the minor league basketball team. And then we also have, right now on hiatus, our arena football league uh, team, the Cleveland uh, Gladiators. Then there's all of the concerts and, and event staff working that. And then finally, what we're showing here is, is kind of another area that we're probably at, um, within this conference, the only ones in this sector is uh, eSports. So the NBA formed a NBA 2K League. Um, so at the start, this we're in our third season. And um, at the first season, I think there were 13 teams and now there's gonna be 21 um, teams involved. And we're actually in the middle of a campaign with, the key, the, with our uh, team called, known as Cavs Legion. And it's about driving how can we market to drive revenue to the new practice facility? Um, so that is a picture of the practice facility. So specifically during the off season, how can we utilize this space and generate more revenue when the team's not there? And so um, we're gonna be wrapping this campaign up uh, next, uh, on Tuesday actually. And when I talked about uh, kind of borrowing ideas or coming up with ideas or working with your account manager, this is something that we worked with Carrie about about talking about the struggle that we had of, we had a lot in the idea of like, in the realm of quantity of ideas, but we didn't necessarily have, like most of them weren't quality ideas, I should say. Like we, we had ideas like, hey, can we get a new Gatorade flavor? And it's like, is that really what we're gonna be doing here? Or is that, but uh, for the most part, so we wanted to really focus more on those quality ideas and working with Carrie, it was kind of driving specific campaigns and spe specific challenges to a challenge statement so that people are focusing, having driving their focus to a certain topic. And, and that has really helped us in, in um, getting those quality ideas. We ran our first 
um, cha innovation challenge in, uh, um, right before the season started because this year is the Cavs 50th season. So we, we launched out to our team members of what do you want to see as a part of the, the uh, 50th season? What do you want to have as not only a team member but as a fan? Because we're all fans as well. Um, and so we had a lot of submissions there and now we're into our second challenge. And our plan is to have them run quarterly at first just to see the momentum that we get from there and then hopefully expand that to maybe monthly to bi-weekly, weekly, whatever it may be, um, but drive it towards that while still opening, still having our open forum for people just to submit ideas on anything that they want to do. Because we, we, utilize the, we utilize the campaigns originally as like different departments or teams. And then we change that to kind of specific topics like cost savings or time savings, labor savings. So that's where we're operating with our open forum is to have those kind of uh, campaigns, but now we're going to have specific challenges. So, um, Roadshows 2.0. So we had such a great success with our original Roadshows with the teams that we hadn't worked with yet, is to have the follow-ups with them and what's the next level, and then also having Roadshows with those teams we have worked with is just giving them a refresher of, hey, when we worked with you in the past, this is how much we've completed since we've worked with you guys. Is there anything that you guys can think of? Because a common question that we that we ask is not, do you have an idea, what's the problem is, like, what keeps you up at night? Like, there are three things that, like, every night you're thinking about, like, over and over again. It's, what are those things that keep you up at night? Is there something we can attack there? So that's been kind of successful. So we have that on the docket. Um, the innovation challenges I talked about. And then Cheese Madness 2020. Um, I mean, build, building off of our success from last year, um, it's going to be, obviously, we're going to have the big prizes again, but now people are, it gets, we've gotten in front of more uh, of our audience, and they really know what we're doing because also of the things that we've implemented. And really what helped us out, too, with our Cheese Madness last year is our president of uh, business operations uh, gave, uh, stood in front of the entire organization and talked about it. And not only he talked about our group and, like, what, what we truly truly are here to do and like talk about shot in the arm is like when he when someone like your president or CEO like gets in front of the company and is just talking like glowingly about you guys that's I mean that's there, there's nothing better like we uh, really that gave us like some notoriety with some groups that we hadn't worked with in the past and and it's really mousetrap I would say 95% of our workforce know, now knows what we do and understands our purpose and I would say five of that percent is just people that have just started, um, but we're going to be in integrated into the onboarding process. So we'll have like a one sheeter that people can see, hey, this is what this team does. Um, and then revenue ge generation and cost savings. Um, that's a big one that we want to focus in on this year is the, I think everyone does is ROI. Because that's really um, when we talk to certain groups, it's like, well, if I put this idea in, what's it going to do for the organization? What is like, what's the money we're going to get back for it? Um, whether it be a cost savings or, or are we generating more revenue? Because we work, I mean, everyone here, I think, works in a world where you're trying to generate revenue. So um, we want to, tying into Tableau will be helpful to kind of pr provide those numbers. And um, that's, that's what we're looking to do. So. Questions? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>